Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my wine channel. Today I'm bringing you a review from the Wedgwood Hotel and I will have uh, my review of my stay at staycation stay at this hotel at the end of this um, video. And so today I'm bringing you an iconic wine which is the 2004 Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. For many people Chateau Lafitte is a very familiar name even if you're not a big wine drinker, it seems to be one of the most iconic wines out there. It is the he most heavily traded wine in the world, in au the auction world. And so I think it um, transcends just the wine world. A lot of people who don't drink a lot of wine do know it just like a Rolex is a high-end brand or Louis Vuitton is a high-end brand that a lot of people know. So the history of Lafitte, uh, first of all, the name Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, um, I jokingly call it Chatty Laffitt, which is um, what Sinbad called it in one of the movies in the 2000s um, because it's the happy wine and also you'll hear some people call it Lai Fei and that's kind of a Chinese pronunciation of it. So um, that's this is all Lafitte. Um, so the it started off, it's got a long history, in 17, sorry, in 1234 it was purchased by the Gombard de Lafitte and that's where the Lafitte name comes from. But in those days, it wasn't actually a winery. It was used to produce grain for cereal and cattle. And it wasn't until really the 17th century that Chateau Lafitte, the winery was, the, the land for Chateau Lafitte was used um, to grow grapes and, and for wines. And that was the Segur family of Calon Segur fame. And it is interesting to note that the Segur family at one time owned uh, Calon Segur, Chateau Lafitte, and Lafitte as uh, Chateau Latour. So it was a large um, family for wine for the wine industry. Um, it kind of uh, continued on and it did a lot of great things with the winery. And um, but the Segur family sold their interest in Chateau Lafitte um, in what during the French Revolution. And um, in 1797, it was sold to a bunch of Dutch merchants. It stayed in the hands of Dutch merchants even through the 1855 classification system. And, um, but you have to realize, if you go back to my video on the 1855 classification system, at that point, it wasn't that big a deal. It was an expo. And um, in those days, no one actually knew it was going to have this much of a uh, impact for the remainder of the world. So it wasn't that big a deal being a first growth at that time. And it was subsequently sold and sold and sold. But... Um, you know, it wasn't that, everyone knew it was a, a very high quality wine, but it didn't have that type of iconic status of being a first growth. It didn't mean that much. It was just like a local competition and it got first prize, big deal. So um, that's kind of the history of it. Um, so, and then in the, I guess, first half of the 19th century, it was in the hands of the Vandlerberg family. Um, and I think they owned it during it, the, while it was classified as a classified growth in 1855. It wasn't until 1868 that um, it was purchased by James Mayer Rothschild, and that's where he combined the name. It was always known as Chateau Lafitte to Lafitte Rothschild. And he died three months after he bought it, and then um, it, the estate was, or the vineyard was, uh, then jointly owned by his three sons, um, Alphonse, Gustave, and Edmund. And it's remained in the Lafitte family till then. Um, it's been in the, under the direction of Eric de Rothschild um, since 1974. So although Chateau Lafitte is a very um, exclusive wine, it's actually one of the biggest and uh, largest vineyards in the Medoc region. It's 107 hectares, huge produces about 35,000 cases of wine a year. Um, and that includes their, you know, first and sec um, second wines. So about 15 to 25,000 cases of the first growth are produced each year. And that's maybe um, one of the reasons for its popularity because you have to have enough wine out there. Uh, it's very high quality, obviously, but you have to have enough wine that people know about it. As an example, like a winery like uh, Le Pin or uh, Chateau La Violette. It just produces so little that you can't even give any to wine critics or you, people just can't find it so it can't get popular. Um, so the composition of the vineyard 
um, the vines in the vineyard is 70% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Petit Verdot. But that's not the um, percentages in each of the wine vintages. And um, generally speaking, the uh, in actual what what's in the actual um, uh, wine itself is a higher, much higher percentage of Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, also a, quite a high percentage of Merlot with a very little bit of Petit Verdot and um, Cabernet Franc. For the 2004 vintage, it was an okay vintage. It wasn't a spectacular vintage. There was a little bit of rain and um, kind of chilliness in the beginning of the season, but it warmed up um, and it actually the end of the season was quite nice. So for those people who were patient and actually trusted the weather, like Chateau Lafitte, it was fine. But for some of the wineries that um, maybe picked a little bit earlier, were not sure about what's going to happen, then that would have um, they might have picked too early and um, they would have got a little bit of greenness in their wines. The 2004 vintage, the blend is 90.5% Cabernet Sauvignon, 9% Merlot, and just half a percent of Cabernet per Franc. Okay, here is the bottle and the cork of Chateau Lafitte. Unfortunately, I drank it all, so I don't have the color, but trust me, it's a kind of a very dark uh, red color and very youthful So, So the cork, 2004 Chateau Lafitte. Yeah, not much with the cork quite quite nice actually for 2004 no cuts in it this is the bottle so you see with the top part then the picture of the actual chateau and that's what you see today I've tried maybe put a picture of the actual um, chateau uh, which I have uh, visited um, on my Instagram page perhaps and then this is uh, the back of the label. Now back from a dinner at Bacchus restaurant where we serve the wine. I've had the Chateau Lafitte now open for close to three hours. It was in a decanter. Uh, the portion of this wine that was not in the decanter, but it should be well aerated at this point. I had it with a top sirloin, which was spectacular um, pairing. So let's um, smell and taste the wine. So on the smell, you're getting like light, fresh cedar with elements of um, a little bit of graphite and a little bit of Asian spice, but it's really still a baby. It's amazing because 04, it's already um, 17, 18 year wine, but it's still quite young after four hours of aeration. So what you get with Lafitte, what strikes you about Lafitte is the balance. It's hard to pinpoint the actual flavors, but it's so balanced. And what I found with Lafitte, drinking it throughout the night, it went well by itself. It went well with um, the steak. And now again, it's still tasting great. You got to trust in these high-end wines that they are going to perform in any setting. You don't really have to specify the setting. They're just really, really great wines. And what strikes me about this Lafitte in particular is the balance. There's obviously dark fruit. There's um, cedar. There's a bit of um, eucalyptus or mint. There's some spice, but the overall balance of this wine is so pleasing. It's so easy to drink. It's so accepting. And this was across the board with the people I drank with, some who are um, more experienced drinkers, some who are relatively new drinkers. Everyone enjoyed the wine. Um, it was not too tannic, but not too light. And it's got this delicate balance that's hard to explain. It's a lot of cab, but it doesn't taste like Napa cab and it doesn't overpower you. The tannins are strong and firm, but not overpowering. The fruit is vibrant, but not too fruity, not like Australian or Napa fruit. It's all pulled back a bit, restrained, 
but to a point where it's very delicate and not austere. Very hard to explain and very hard to get this type of balance in wines. And probably that's the characteristic of Lafitte. I'm really surprised with this wine. I think the wine spec rating is 93 points. I've had this wine before. I'm really enjoying it tonight. Um, it could be the company, it could be the food, but I'm gonna give this wine 95 points. It's a really, really um, delicious wine. And again, it's one of these wines that you really can't pinpoint exactly what is so good about it. But all you know is that when you drink it, you keep on wanting to drink it and you just go through the whole bottle very quickly. Until next time, happy drinking.